My first time having sex was actually in one of them. I was about five. So dude. dudes, welcome to the second hero how to. In this installment I'll be going over Lucio in a similar way that I did with Moira. Again, here are my most up to date credentials, which you shouldn't even care about anyway. Lucio was armed with a Samsung 9000. The seven niggas! Lucio dishes out a decent amount of damage by shooting out a 4 round burst doing 20 damage per round, meaning that theoretically, you could burst a tracer if landing or 4 shots on the heads. You'll fire these bad boys in a clip with a somewhat lengthy reload time of 1.5 seconds. The rate of fire of the Samsung 9000 is just under a second to release all 4 rounds within a single burst. It's a bit like Genji Shurikens in the sense that you have to constantly adjust your aim in order to have all rounds hit, hence aiming with this thing isn't the easiest task in the world. It also doesn't help that the projectiles move quite slowly compared to Zen Orbs or Fire Rockets. Other than that, there's not much to using as primary fire, it's great for spam and gaining ult charge, and if you hit your shots, it's a quite lethal weapon in taking duels against DPS characters, which I'll get onto later. Lucio's second ability, the Boofy Boy. Obrigado. I'm from Brazil. Obrigado, come to Brazil. Come to is an alternate fire from the Samsung 9000, dealing 25 damage on a 4 second cooldown. It consumes no ammo, so if an enemy is on a single bar of HP, a simple click will finish them off. Considering that it has a range of 8 meters, it can also be much more effective than meleeing. Although the most important detail that I'll mention later is that there is a CC knockback effect allowing enemies to be pushed off of a map. In combination with the Samsung 9000 and some decent mechanics, you have the ability to one-shot a 200 HP character by landing 4 rounds in the head, then booping followed by a melee, dealing 205 damage. You're most likely to pull this off against characters with speed self penalties, such as Arna or Widowmaker while scoping in for instance. Otherwise, use this to build for your backline support, booping enemies off the map, or to finish off low HP enemies. Lucio's third ability, the musical mood, <laughs> can be deemed to be a secondary passive to his warhide ability which I'll get onto later. And one time, you can choose to have either 16 HPS or a speed buff of 25% applied to you and your teammates in a 12 meter radius. Also important to note that the heal is about 75% when applied to yourself. You'll see most Lucios rapidly switch between the two songs to create unpredictable movement, which is most useful when dueling a DPS. Throw in some AD AD strafing, crouching and jumping and you'll become a very difficult target to hit. Though keep in mind, just spamming AD AD on your keyboard will actually make you more predictable, so lean on the left or right stronger to solve this problem. Speed is best utilised to conserve as much shield resource when moving through a choke, as well as kiting when the opposing team has more resource, such as a Nana Blade or a High Charge Zarya alongside a Nana Boosted Reinhardt. The heal song is best utilised to gain ult charges, small grace periods to gain sound barrier faster. For instance, using your heal song Midair will not slow you down while simultaneously providing healing to the rest of your team. If you want bronze, silver or gold and stick into the heal song too much, you might as well be playing Brigitte. Either song for peeling a backline support is somewhat useful, although in a somewhat coordinated team comp, sticking on speed can increase evasiveness and can allow for the other support to kite to nearby safety. Lucio's fourth ability, the Revving Redliner. <laughs> accentuates either songs that Lucio plays from his musical mood for 3 seconds. His healing song goes from 16 HPS to 52 when applied to allies, and from 12.3 HPS to 40 when applied to himself. Conversely, his speed boost goes from a 25% buff to a 60% buff in speed, allowing a Reinhardt to move at over 7 meters per second when holding his shield up. The cooldown is a noteworthy 12 seconds, hence you should be using this ability with careful thought during a teamfight. Lucio's passive, Sideways Skate 4, allows him to wall ride, gaining a 30% speed buff and a boost of momentum when he leaves the wall, which can also be stacked multiple times. Despite this being a passive, it is one of the most complex abilities to exist in the game, with an incredibly high skill cap to master. The most basic and important tips for wall riding that I can give is to wall skim and to look upwards whilst wall riding to gain more height, although I highly recommend that after you go watch this video, you should check out the extremely in-depth guide made by a collection of loose domains, including SK, on how to master wall riding. I'm simply not going to cover the intricacies of war riding since it would be a waste of my own time and your time and it would be less clear and concise. On both console and PC, the default keybinds are terrible, so here's the keybinds that I use on console, although a trip to Reddit can also be useful to find better or more suitable keybinds if you're on PC, or if you simply don't like the keybinds that I use. The passive itself can be used to gain high ground, perform rollouts, gain speed for a quick assassination, or quickly peel for your team. Talking about the form one leads me onto an area not covered by many Lucio guides, positioning. About a month ago, Jane had uploaded a video going over specific clips from a mid-master Lucio player, not abusing high ground and essentially staying on the low ground for the majority of the fights. Because even the Ash can coach gun up on top top of here and then use a dynamite or anything like that but if she coach guns up there and she's not assisted by her mercy or something you can you can realistically take her especially uh in these close range matchups you know especially if she tries to scope in or anything like that so this is you're going to see this kind of play out here where not only are you talking about healing but you need to be able to do what you're doing with your healing 
uh, but while doing other things, providing scouting information. If you're on a vertical sightline, you're definitely going to see way more of what's going on. You're going to be able to see opposing positions. You know, if you just land a couple of left clicks onto the Zenyatta in the back line while you're floating up here, then that means the Zenyatta needs to play safer. It's going to be easier for maybe your McCree or uh, McCree rather to land a headshot on, maybe finish him off. If the Mercy has to go and heal him up, then that's going to be resources you're drawing away from the front line. But because the opponent is going to be way better at the shield break in this kind of front line resource war, you need to try desperately to make sure that the opponent is going to be losing as many resources that would otherwise be invested into your poor Reinhardt, as well as making sure that the opponent can't do anything cheeky like shooting past your Reinhardt uh, and getting some like massive dynamite plays or being able to poke or dive anything with the actual D.Va standing up there. Um, so high ground contest, so you have more options, more lethality choices to, you know, if you do see, of like, the Zen gets to half health, you can amp speed, go nuts, but, uh, you know, this, uh, this high ground position will also just give you a lot more options because you're going to have a better information that you can use to decide whether you do need to amp heal, which ideally you really don't want to amp heal. You want to be able to use this speed advantage against the Zenyatta uh, to engage because you have not only the wall, but the Lucio to try and pick your engages. The defenders can't pick the engagement nearly as well, but they do have the superior resources in just a straight up frontline, frontline brawl. I'll link the video down below, but in essence, places such as the high ground opposite Cafe on Hollywood First Point are great places to hold as you deny the high ground from DPS via your booby boy, your aura can still reach your team, and you still have the ability to quickly peel for your other support who should be in Cafe. Another great place to hold would be anywhere on the high ground on the Barney First Point. Let's take the example that you have an honor playing back side of point, and a Genji Tracer or Doomfist dives the honor. You can easily wall ride to help peel for your honor, whereas a cat such as Moira is unable to peel, with the honors forced to play closer in which she is more prone to danger. Lucius Ultimate, Barrier Boy. As a temporary 750 HP shield to all teammates that have line of sight to Lucio in a 30 meter radius that lasts 7 seconds. The most obvious thing to mention is the cast time of just over 700 milliseconds in which you can be easily stunned. As a general rule of thumb, if there's no Zarya or Sigma, beating for aggression to allow your entire team to use their own abilities aggressively is of high value. There are many nuances, for instance if there's a Sombra on the enemy team, it is your own sole responsibility to hide from the Sombra and ult tracker so that once she EMPs, you can follow up with a beat after, similar to how I did in this clip. Another nuance is wall riding to avoid Reinhardt Shatter in case your Reinhardt doesn't block, hence you can drop the beat to save your entire team, which was done by the Vancouver Titans back in the Ghost Meta. Time is wall riding at all times, he's amazing at this, he doesn't get hit by the Shatter, and is able to land his own sound barrier saving his team from death. The final main nuance is that you dropping beat doesn't always mean you're safe. For instance, you are still vulnerable if you drop a beat in a graph if there's enough burst damage, as you can see by this clip from Jane. And I, I would like to point out in that last fight that Veltal did beat, but again, it didn't save them, right? This is why support ultimates in this meta are used for much different reasons than trying to save, survive Gravitons. Like either, like especially in the case of beat, the chance of you getting stunned out of uh, a beat in the middle of a grab is actually pretty high. With that being said, if timed correctly, you can avoid burst damage from a Riptire or provide more time for your team to escape line of sight from a high noon. In terms of team comp, it's pretty vital in determining whether you can play aggressive and be a red at Lucio or be more passive in order to enable your tanks. The most fitting comp for Lucio is Ryan Zarya Brawl to simply allow your Ryan to swing his hammer and be more efficient with his shield resource. Dive is also very viable with Lucio, although Mercy Zen, Brig Zen, or Big Honor can be seen as more viable with Mercy enabling the DPS, Zen providing extra damage on a singular target, and Brigitte providing a stronger backbone. The poke comp with Sigma Arisa is possibly the worst synergy that Lucio has apart from the highest levels, as teams that are uncoordinated will not rotate hence the speed is of little value. However, even though running Bap Zen or Mercy Zen, especially if the experimental changes go through, are more optimal on paper, running Lucio with double shield and ranked will hardly matter as it will allow you to play more aggressively. If your team decides to run some form of poke, Taking high ground and duels against DPS such as Ash, Soldier, or Genji would relate stress of your entire team. Obviously, some game sense comes into this. For instance, not playing too close to a McCree as he can stun you, or expecting a mercy pocket and calling for your D.Va or DPS to aid you would be the right move. This leads me on to the final section of the video, your synergy with your other support. If the experimental changes go through, it may be an indirect nerf to Lucio as Lucio Moira and Lucio Honor becomes less viable, with Mercy Zen or Mercy Bat becoming more viable. Despite this, Lucio Honor and Lucio Moyo are probably the best synergies for Lucio as they are more suited to more brawl style comps from the get go. If running Lucio Moira, you can be more aggressive as Moira shouldn't need much peeling, whereas the opposite is true for Lucio Honor. 
Lucio Brick is actually not a low amount of healing as many people think, and if you are running this, Brawl Comps or Dive Comps suit this best. Lucio Mercy is similar to Lucio Moira as you won't need to peel for your Mercy, although tanks may be on low healing, hence a Ball Monkey or Ball Diva is most optimised, as Ball does not require much healing as Winston. Lucio Bap and Lucio Zen are the backlines that you shouldn't run, as if you get Dove, your tanks will immediately fall. In conclusion, mastering Lucio's primary fire and wall riding will allow him to take space on the high ground to dual DPS, however, if your tanks are struggling to make and take space, sticking with them to speed them past choke is the second best thing you can do. And that's all you need to know about the Boosty Booper. If this video helped to raise your IQ, share it with your friends to also raise theirs. Until next time. Fuck you, big boy with that big broom, big boy how I come through, big boy with that brand new cause I'm killing it.